Hello, everybody. Welcome to uh, the Sunday live stream. And uh, today I took a look at uh, a couple of different factors about what was really going on in the Bitcoin ecosystem. And uh, a couple of things shocked me. First of all, uh, that the uh, Bitcoin transaction fees are so darn high. Why that actually is and what's happening in the background. Also, we're going to take a look at uh, the portfolio, see how it's actually doing uh, as far as dollar cost averaging. And then lastly, CASPA. So first things first. Today, I woke up and I was trying to buy some things and uh, I was moving, uh, trying to move Bitcoin around. And uh, the thing that struck me was it was $15, 15 or 16 bucks just to transfer Bitcoin or to, to, to move Bitcoin. And uh, I thought to myself, why the heck is it so expensive? Because that seems like a ridiculous amount for Bitcoin. So I uh, took a look at bitinfocharts.com. There's a link in the description. You can check this out or just uh, Google bitinfocharts. And I took a look over three years, and in blue is the Bitcoin average transaction fee. And you can see that usually Bitcoin average transaction fees are pretty low as compared to one of the, the most uh, expensive uh, fees out there, which would be Ethereum. And we're going to see here like October, you can see the Bitcoin transaction fee are like $2.60, something like that. Ethereum, crazy enough, $22 and so on and so forth. Now, there's been times where it's actually gone a little bit up above and a little bit below. It doesn't really matter. It's just uh, over an average, you can see that Bitcoin, the transaction fees are usually pretty low. The problem is, is that when things heat up and we, we saw this every time, we see this every time that uh, we have like a major bull run. I saw this in 2017. Uh, a lot of you saw this in 2021 and now we're seeing it again. And it's one of those things that we, we can kill the narrative of, you know, Bitcoin is there for peer-to-peer -peer transactions. No, it's not. It's not. If we see that, and let's be honest, not everybody's using Bitcoin for peer-to-peer -peer transactions, but if they did, it would be super expensive. Of course, now people are screaming out there, screaming out, going, but Rob, what about Lightning? Lightning will take care of itself. At some point, if that actually takes off the ground and everybody's using it, sure. But uh, so far right now, we're seeing a lot of transaction fees. And what I took a look at was just... The last, well, let's just zoom in, shall we? The last three months or so. Again, blue is Bitcoin, red is Ethereum. And I'm taking a look at this and I'm like, what the heck just happened? Because this isn't how it's supposed to be, in all honesty. Ethereum, I get it, because everybody's using Ethereum. They're, they're doing everything with, uh, with NFTs and, and DeFi plays and ERC-20 tokens, obviously, right? Makes sense. But over the last couple of days, I mean, look at this. You got a Bitcoin average, average, so it could be higher, it could be lower, $18. Ethereum transaction fee, $7, almost eight bucks, right? And then of course it's gone up and down, but today is, it's, it's, it's a wide uh, dichotomy. You've, you've got almost Ethereum transaction fee of almost $5 and Bitcoin transaction fees all the way up to 18. And I put this out actually on uh, Twitter this morning. I said, what? I go, I've seen it all because now we've got uh, the Bitcoin transaction fee almost triple, well, two, three and a half times of what the Ethereum average transaction fee. And then... <laughs> Hey, Seuss is like, his ordinal season is back. And I was like, yeah, it looks that way. And then and Jack Ripple put out, he goes, yeah, but look at this. You know, as far as like crypto fees, Bitcoin is in second place and Ethereum is in first place. And first of all, I was like, well, that's November 13th. Let's take a look at it, what it is today. And today, uh, the Bitcoin, actually the one-day fees, almost $12 million in fees. That's pretty good for Bitcoin miners. I mean, uh, they're processing the transaction, they're, they're uh, building those blocks and they're getting paid. That's fine, Not, I don't have a problem with that. Seven day average transaction fees, seven million. Ethereum down here at 5.5. But again, what I've always said before is take a look at an average. Are things moving up? Are things going down? Because fees are fees. I mean, like Ethereum is uh, pretty expensive usually. And of course, other ones, you know, people will say, well, Solana doesn't, you know, get that many fees or Cardano doesn't doesn't have to pay that many fees. Well, yeah, because it's cheap, super cheap. So it really depends on on the network congestion or not and if they can actually handle it. We can see over September, August or so, you can see that it was pretty low, pretty damn low, probably second, third, maybe fourth place. And then all of a sudden, bloop, it came up. What the heck happened? Well, Jesus called it. It's ordinals. Ordinals, if you don't know, are essentially NFTs on the Bitcoin blockchain. That's really what it is. And Bitcoin maxis lost their mind when this came out. And they were like, this is a problem. We don't need this on Bitcoin. This is not what it was designed to do. And now we're going to have major congestion. And you know what? They were right. Now, I'm not going to sit here and argue with, with anybody about, is this what it's supposed to be? Is this what it is? If you look at the Bitcoin white paper, it says very clearly, 
peer-to-peer -peer transactions. And all of a sudden that went out the window when we figured out that it was just way too damn expensive. And then all of a sudden it became digital gold. And then it became a hedge against inflation. And then it became fill in the blank or whatever it is. So like for me, I think that is a, it is a, I think Larry Fink's put, put it pretty, pretty well, a flight to quality. And it really is a hedge against inflation in my personal opinion. We can see that over time, over how much you can get, you know, 10 years ago, how much could you buy for $20 in the grocery store for groceries? Probably a good amount. Today, and of course, 20, 10 years ago, one Bitcoin was like 20 bucks, maybe 40, 50, something like that. And now, of course, one Bitcoin, you can buy the store. So it's a little bit different. But to get back on track, it's ordinals. And this is what we have. So tokens based on the Bitcoin blockchain are emerging as the newest play among market participants. BRC20 category tokens have added some 21%. As a sector, what does BRC actually stand for? It stands for Bitcoin Request for Comment. It was introduced in April to allow users to issue transferable tokens directly to the network for the first time. And that's a, that's, that's a really good point. In April, it was introduced. April. So we take a look here. Let me go back. Now let's just go. Now let's go three years. And we're going to see over here, see where I... This was roughly May 6th. And Ethereum transaction fee were $27. And Bitcoin skyrocketed from $2 all the way up, holy smokes, to 30, yeah, wow, to $31 Bitcoin average transaction fees. That was in May 8th. So ordinals were introduced roughly around April or so. People finally caught on, took them two or three weeks, maybe a month, and the transaction fees went through the roof. Is that going to happen in the bull run? Yeah, probably. We'll see how it, how it goes. Anyhow, they were introduced in April to allow users to issue transferable tokens directly to the network for the first time. Tokens called inscriptions function on the Ordinals protocol. The protocol allows users to embed data into the Bitcoin blockchain by inscribing references to digital art into small Bitcoin-based transactions. ORDI, O-R-D-I, a token tied to the Ordinals protocol, was listed on Binance, field a 50% price jump within hours, uh, data from Ordinals Tracker can be shown on Ord Spaces, and there's over 37, that's crazy. There's over 37,000 Bitcoin requests for comment, 20 tokens exist as of Thursday. So I was just curious about that, that Ordi token itself, it was listed on Binance. How'd it do? <laughs> well, it's down 8% uh, since uh, the, the inception, but look at this. If you take a look over seven days, not too bad, 14, 30, look at this. And you can see like Ordi, Oriscan, Ordinals, App ID. So in November, wow, look at this. 31st October was like five bucks. And then it rocketed all the way up to 26, 76. That's, that's uh, quite an increase or a jump. Does that mean that is the best thing of all time? Uh, as far as price action goes, yeah, uh, for, for quite a things. But is it going to last this, the, the test of time? Who knows? So then it says data from Ordinals Tracker, Ord Spaces. And that was another thing that I took a look at. There's a website called ordspace.org. And you can take a look at it. And it's got all the different Ordinals, BRC20s, uh, as far as ranking and market cap. Look at this one called SATS. Market cap is 459 million. That's crazy. So I was just curious about that one. Maybe we can find that here as well. SATS. I don't know if this is, ah, no, no, no. That's Satoshi's vision. Sats, and see how it says ordinals right there? Ordinals, okay, click that. Sats, ordinals, you can find this in ordinal scan. Sats coin, that's crazy. How's it done? Well, over the last 24 hours, not so good. 14 days, 30 days, 90 days, all right. 180 days, okay, one year. And then that's max. And this just got out in June and it went from nothing. Yeah, like 5,000 something percent. So that's what we have as far as like, what the heck is going on? How will this affect Bitcoin moving in the future? You're probably gonna see uh, more transaction fees. It's probably gonna go through the roof. And especially with the next uh, Bitcoin bull market, actually the crypto bull market, which I think is coming up relatively soon. Could be 2024, could be 2025, who really knows? but you're gonna see those transaction fees go through the roof and uh, that is what it is. Now, I'm not gonna sit here and say that this is wrong or this is right. 
I'll let the market decide. That's what it's there for. So let me just think about that in the comments section. And then let's talk about accumulation time. And we're going to take a look at the portfolio. This is a pretty clear example of how things have been working so far. I'm a big believer in the four-year cycle. I could be wrong. It could break down. But it's been doing pretty good for the last 12 years or so. So, you know, we have these, these peaks and these draws and these uh, the all-time highs. Then we get a bear market. Then there's a big chunk of accumulation as things start to like, you know, uh, kind of track sideways where nobody wants to do anything because they're bored with the market and it didn't go up 5,000%. Everybody's ticked off. And then the people that get rewarded are the ones that pretty much just kind of stick around, dollar cost average, I think. And then uh, as time goes on, bull market. Same thing happened in 2014 and 2017. Uh, back here is 2013. And then we had an all-time high. Then, of course, everything just, it gets, it always gets overextended because the technology is there, but the people haven't caught up to the tech. Like people just don't understand like Bitcoin. Like ask any of, any of your friends out there that are out of, out of crypto and say, hey, what do you think about buying crypto? What do you think about buying Bitcoin? Like, well, that's way too expensive. I mean, you know, $35,000, dollars or whatever it is today, I can't afford that. And then you can remind them, hey, you know, you don't have to buy a full Bitcoin. You can buy these things called sats. And uh, you know, there's like 100 million for one Bitcoin. You can buy 20 bucks of Bitcoin. And that's just how far along we are because people just don't get it. So again, things get overextended. We get a bear, people accumulate, at least the smart ones, like you watching this video right now. If you're here right now, you probably have been accumulating for quite some time. Congratulations, not easy. Then you get a bull run. And then of course it comes down over here and the same thing happens again and the same thing's happening again. It's just, it's just a cycle. That's just how it is. And it always astounds me is of, of how people like they want to rail, they, they're always like, no, no, this time is different, Rob, because of X, Y, and Z. I'm like, no, it's not. It's gonna be the same thing. I don't know how big the bull run's gonna be, but I mean, it's just, I could be wrong. Anyhow, so you got a bear market and we're now we're, we're accumulating. And that was the whole point of me dollar cost averaging in 2022 to today. So what we've always done on Sunday is just take a look at the portfolio, how things are actually doing. This is what I'm actually buying. And I want, I have to remind everybody, this is not everything that I own. You understand, like I own some things that uh, from the last cycle, like I still have some theta, I got a bunch of theta. I still got some XRP. I still got Avalanche from the last time and a host of other things that are just sitting there. I didn't uh, sell correctly, and that's on me, but I'll get it right this next time. But here's what I've been actively dollar cost averaging. And these, this is either like on a daily or on a weekly. And we've got Algo, Arbitrum, Near, Cosmos, Polkadot, Polygon, Chainlink, Doge, Cardano, Solana, Ethereum, and Bitcoin. And we started this on September 1st. And I said, you know, let's just, this is not what I'm doing, but I'm just saying as an example, 10 bucks a day, right, for everything. How would we be doing? Well, over time, we're pretty, doing pretty damn good, actually. Now, if you would have looked at this again in October, I was only up, you would have been only up if you were started as a first. You're only up like three of these, these cryptos. And Chainlink was your big winner. Solana was only up 7.8%. Bitcoin's up 1.5%. Everything else, you were down. But now, of course, things are looking pretty good, right? Everybody's happy. Yay. So everything's in the green. Fantastic. But again, if we just zoom out real quick. Accumulation. Let's just take this back a notch, shall we? Let's, let's make the starting point a little bit earlier. Da, 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 da. February, January 1st. How would we have done? Well, we would have still sucked in the beginning because it's just tough to dollar cross average nothing. But then as time has gone on, we weren't actually in the green all the way, were we? We're actually three underperformed. And these are the ones that I really I thought were doing pretty good. Arbitrum, I thought was going to be a major hit and just barely now squeaking things out. Maybe it'll actually pump up. I'll go at him, so on and so forth. But you can see that it doesn't matter because you were in earlier, you dollar cost average, you're up massively, right? You invested 3,000. Solana, you've more than doubled and 8,400. Link, you've roughly doubled. Bitcoin, eh. Near, Doge, Ada, ETH, Matic, DOT. And I got to tell you, I think that some of these altcoins will outperform Bitcoin. That's usually how it always works. And then we'll have a blow off top and then everything will crash and the alts will suck for a while and they'll be down 90, 95%. Bitcoin could crash again another 77, 
and it'll just kind of, you know, repeat. That's what I think. I don't think this next one, everybody's going to adopt Bitcoins like, oh, BlackRock's here, so everybody should get on board. They don't get it yet. They don't get it. But it could be wrong. But there's one thing that I'd like to, to mention. Let's just say for giggles, we put in this thing called CASPA. CASPA. How much will we be up? Oh, there it is. This one. Now, take this with a grain of salt because CASPA has been on an absolute tear. And of course, everybody who's invested in CASPA now gets to remind me, Rob, I told you about this six months ago, nine months or whatever it was. And of course, you'd be up 741%. You would invest at 3,000, you would have 25,000. This is kind of, cher this is not kind of, this is cherry picking. This is really what it is. It's cherry picking data. I understand, I get it. I'll lash myself later. But it is just something to say about some of these things will come out of nowhere and I'll outperform. And that's just one of those things. So you have to understand, like, is this something that I should get into or you should get into? And I'm going to tell you right now, straight up gambling. It's straight up gambling. That's just what it is. However, we could take a look at it. And of course, I'm going to do a quick little overview of CASPA. And you can decide for yourself. And of course, there's a lot of videos out there you can find out. You can go to the website. I'll link down in the description. You can figure out for yourself. This is something you should get into. But again, does this mean that this is going to be the next Solana? This is going to be the next Cardano back in you know 2018 to 2021? I have no idea. And nobody really does. And if they tell you that they are, they're full of it. So here we go. So Caspa, go to caspa.org. And right now, like when I first started looking at it, it was like ranked 80th or 70th or something like that. Now it's like 27, 28. Correct me in the comment section, right? So Caspa, especially, is supposed to be very fast. Let me just go over here. It's supposed to be very fast. It's supposed to be, it's a proof of work. It's a layer one. And uh, instead of being a blockchain, it's not a blockchain. It's a block DAG. It's a ghost block DAG, as they call it. And a DAG is a decentralized, no decentralized, directed a cyclical, a cyclical graph. So instead of, let me just show you what it looks like. Instead of being all in a line, like how Bitcoin does, and it can verify all the different blocks every 10 minutes and it kind of goes back. This is what block deck does. It pretty much just kind of just spritz everything out and it can correspond to all the different blocks that are out there, which makes it very quite quick as a matter of fact. And we do a comparison chart. This is Caspa. The speed and block time, it makes a block every one second. First of all, is that even true? It sounds kind of ridiculous. There's a website called explorer.caspa and watch this. So let's see here. Still waiting. So you had one at 12.05.05. Somehow 0.404. Ah, maybe this is the DAG. I don't really see it moving. Let me reset it. Oh, that was fast. Okay, there we go. Maybe there was a sticker. It was stick. It was stuck. So, okay. You got uh, them producing blocks every single second, it looks like, roughly. You know, transactions, three, two, two. Of course, that's every second. The question I have, and we'll get into this, is who's using this? That's the question. Okay, so that's CAS. Well, let's go forward. Uh, tokenomics. This is the big thing. And I think this is pretty, pretty good. As far as like, of course, consensus mechanism, you can say, you know, CASPA, Bitcoin, Cadena. Proof of work, proof of work, proof of work. Ethereum, proof of stake. Litecoin, proof of work. Cardano, proof of stake and the best one out there, my personal opinion. Ergo proof of work for, for, for Dogecoin. Uh, scalable, yes. Max supply, this is the thing. Bitcoin's max supply is 21 million. Cadena is roughly a billion. Ethereum is infinite, but it can be uh, deflationary. Uh, the max supply of Caspa, someone said it was 28 million. No, 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 it's 28 billion. 28 billion, 700 million. However, if you look at Cardano, that's roughly about the same. It's in the it's in the 20 some billion, correct me in the comment section. So it's not outside the realm of possibility. This can do pretty well. I mean, like I said, it's number 27. Solves the solves the uh, trilemma. Scalability, security and decentralization. All right. Smart contracts coming soon. And Bitcoin, it says no. But if you if you put on stacks, that's the smart contract functionability on a layer two, essentially. That's what stacks can do. So I don't really know if that's true. Gas fees are low. Fair launch. And this is the big thing. Fair launch was yes. Bitcoin was yes. Cadena, no. Ethereum, no. No, no. And a couple of yeses. 
what that means is that there was no ICO. It wasn't pre-mined. It wasn't given out to a bunch of VCs. It was just kind of put out there and then you could, you could, uh, you could mine it. And that's how you would actually get it. But the, it's a little different. Anyhow, it's speaking of mining. So here's the emission schedule of how much it's actually going to release. We know that Bitcoin, the last, last Bitcoin we mined, I believe, in 2140. So we got quite a bit to go, even though we've, we've already mined like roughly 19 and a half million or so. And I got to tell you, I think three to five million have been lost already. I mean, they're coming back. But here's the emission schedule itself. So pre-deflationary, month one, they were putting out 500 per second, quite a lot. And then, of course, if we come over here, we've, this is the second year we are in November, correct? So right now it's 77. Yeah. No, no, that's 2024, genius. Let's see. Oh, yeah, 155, November 6, 2023. So we've got 155 getting cranked out every second. And then on December 7th, it'll be 146, then 138. Three, so that's how it's uh, being pushed out as far as the schedule goes uh, for CASPA. And then there was one more thing. I will say this. This was the one I liked the best. As far as like the people who are behind it, here's the founder, Yonatan Sampolinsky, nailed it. Uh, da, 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 da. Implemented the ghost tag, invented by Yonatan with his then PhD advisor, Professor Aviv Zohar. Uh, this was back in 2013 when they conceived the, the ghost protocol and it was actually cited in the Ethereum white paper. I thought it was cited in Cardano paper as well, but I could be wrong. Yonatan Curley holds a postdoc position to Harvard, transaction ordering protocols and MEV, and they got a couple of uh, developers, which looks like they're all high speed stuff and so on and so forth. So that's what we have for CASPA. And uh, I will just say this. I know people are talking about how great it is and you know it's gonna be fantastic. I know someone just in the comments said, just be careful because it's a pump and dump, who knows? Because I gotta ask you right now, if we take a look back the fees schedule, like here's all the different cryptos that this website is tracking. Maybe it's not tracking Casper right now, but the question is besides the people that are buying it right now, and of course, yes, apparently it is super cheap. Yes, it's proof of work. Yes, apparently it solves the trilemma and all that great stuff. And it's great for transactions. If it can do, you know, one block per second, sounds pretty great. So far, people are buying it like crazy. It is speculation. How many different companies are using it? How many people are right now using it for to buy things, transactions, to buy coffee? I don't know, whatever it is. Or fill in the blank of whatever crypto can actually do. So for me, I'm looking at it. And to be fair, I have bought some. I'm not, uh, I'm only human. Even I get into a little FOMO. But I will just say this, um, there are some things that make it attractive and sometimes these things will make people buy it like crazy. And the real question is, is just what we looked at in the very beginning. When people start to use it and they use it a lot, I'm not talking about the people that are coming back and forth. I'm talking about the people that are really, really using it. We're going to have something like this. Will this ghost DAG be able to hold on and process all these transactions and not go super inflationary as far as fees go? Back in 2017, when I got in, everybody told me that Bitcoin was for peer-to-peer -peer transactions only. This stuff about digital gold and hedge against inflation was BS. It was there in the white paper. But as soon as things changed, the investors said, you know what? We think it's for this. And I don't blame him for that because it's all like technology. Do you think we had any idea how great iron ore is or what we could do with fire when man first discovered it or steel? We had no idea that we could actually make rockets out of that, which I think is what stainless steel, I think that's what uh, SpaceX is using their latest rock out of. Crazy. Or building skyscrapers and things like that. I just think the technology isn't there yet and we'll see what happens in the next bull run. And that's it for today. So look, if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing, and we talk about is time sensitive. Now that concludes the news. So if you got to take off, take off, go watch football, golfer, and I'll see you in the next one.